Hey guys, Pete here. Some interesting Game of Thrones related news this week that doesn't have anything to do with Season 7 or Season 8. HBO has actually put out some news that is really exciting for the spinoffs or prequels or whatever you want to call it. And this will not contain any spoilers, so this is for anybody who wants to watch. Now we've known for sure that there was something in the works, but we didn't really have any details. I made a long video a couple months back when we got some news from Casey Bloys, who's the head of programming at HBO. He came out around the time that Westworld was winding up and around Emmy time when Game of Thrones was poised to win a bunch of awards, saying that he was in talks with George R. R. Martin. Now Martin kind of dodged everything, saying they were just needed to finish Game of Thrones season 7 and season 8, but obviously something was going on behind the scenes. This week we've learned that there is not just one idea in the mill, but four. What that means we'll get into a little bit later, but let's look at what we heard from Entertainment Weekly was the first source that dropped this. James Hibbard from EW wrote that HBO has taken the unusual step of developing four different ideas from different writers. Does that mean that there'll be four different projects developed? Not necessarily, but four is a pretty nice number. So this could mean that, that things will get massively expanded on HBO, or it could mean that there'll be another full-on series with a couple of other movies or something like that to go along with it. On the other hand, it could mean that they'll, they'll start out with four ideas and narrow it down to one, and that's all we'll see right at the beginning. Now, Hibbard went on to write that the, most of the writers that were involved with this announcement have major theatrical film experience. And what's awesome from my point of view, and I think a lot of other fans, is that George R. R. Martin is personally involved in two of the projects. So the ideas come from Max Bornstein. He uh, directed Kong, Skull Island, and Fox's Minority Report. He was involved with that. Jane Goldman, who is involved with Kingsman, The Secret Service, and X-Men First Class, and she'll be working directly with Martin. Brian Helgeland, I think I'm saying that right, who's responsible for A Knight's Tale and L.A. Confidential. And then Carly Rae, who has worked on Mad Men and The Leftovers, and she'll be the other person who's working directly with George R.R. R. Martin. When asked about any more details, the only thing we get from HBO itself is that these shows, or more accurately, ideas, will explore different time periods of George R.R. R. Martin's vast and rich universe. The other thing that we found out, which we didn't know at all before, was that the showrunners of Game of Thrones, David Benioff and Dan Weiss, they said they were not going to be involved in any future projects. We found out that they're actually going to be on as executive producers. Out of this group, the one I'm most excited about would be Carly Rae and George R. R. Martin working together, primarily because these are shows, you know, Carly Rae has worked on shows that I, I'm familiar with and watched and enjoyed. Madman was good. Um, she was a contributing writer on earlier seasons, and then in the final season, if I remember correctly, she was considered a staff writer. And The Leftovers is whatever. It's, pro you know, it's prestige TV or whatever they call it nowadays, but I enjoy that show. I enjoy the writing. It's not the most popular show, but it's definitely a good story. I would love to see what she comes up with while working with George R. R. Martin. Hibbert at EW says shows repeatedly, and I don't know if that means he knows something more than what is actually written here, but in HBO's statements, they say Weiss and Benioff continue to work on finishing up the seventh season and are already in the midst of writing and preparing for the eighth and final season, but that they have kept them up to date on their plans and they will be attached, along with George R.R. R. Martin, as executive producers on all projects. We will support them as they take a much-deserved break from writing about Westeros once the final season is complete. The article goes on to say that the prequel or spin-off development battle is sort of like what Disney does with their Marvel and Star Wars brands rather than how a TV network, in this case exactly HBO, tends to deal with a retiring series. We know that Game of Thrones is going to end after season 8, at least the main series, because that's the way George R. R. Martin intended it, and Dan and Dave have always stuck to that idea. Game of Thrones, though, is not a regular TV show, and HBO is not a regular television network, for that matter. 
Now, they have never done a spinoff or a continuation of a series, but they've never really had one like H. You know, I mean, they've had the they've had really big ones. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the biggest ones. And they've kind of helped to open up the world into where a lot of the shows that we watch on other networks are possible. But at the same time, it's an international blockbuster. Game of Thrones is over the top, huge, and really only rivaled by The Walking Dead, which is on regular TV. HBO is a subscription service, and last season, Game of Thrones had 23.3 million viewers in the U.S. alone. Plus, they win a bunch of Emmys. Um, There's a lot of merchandising that goes along with the series. So it's really, there's no other serial TV project that's exactly the same. And the books themselves are huge in their own right. I mean, they are gigantic. Hibbert says, and I agree, that, you know, there is a variety of different combinations and options that are on the table. And, you know, some of them could end up being miniseries or movies or anything along those lines. For those of us who have read all the main series books and, you know, the Song of Ice and Fire books, plus the related titles, uh, the Duncan Egg books, the World of Ice and Fire book, the world book that brings in a lot of different historical references, you know, before the actual main series... And then the stories that were released in anthologies with other writers' stories like The Princess and the Queen and The Dance of the Dragons. I mean, there's just an unlimited amount of content that they could use. HBO itself says there is no set timetable for these projects. We'll take as much or as little time as the writers need. And as with all our development, we will evaluate what we have when the scripts are in. So this really does leave the door wide open, you know, and it's really exciting for those of us who have been speculating on what the prequel might be. This further confirms that there will be, in my opinion, at least one more series, but also gives the room that there might be multiple ones, which is the ideal situation that most of us have been hoping for. As mentioned, I have made a video where I went into the most likely different choices that they have and what makes the most sense. I hope you guys will check that video out after you're done with this one because there's no reason for me to make the same video twice. There's no new contents, so that video is still relevant. There's also a great conversation in the comments there already in place so you can see what you think based on what other people are hoping for or what they think legitimately will be made. One thing I came away from after making the video was that Aegon's Conquest would be a great option. Originally, when I made that, I was a little bit on the fence about whether that would be good or not and how much they would actually have to spend on CGI for the dragons. But some people came with some pretty good input, and I think that that would actually be fantastic. Same thing with Valeria, though. The fall of the rise and fall of Valeria would be fantastic. I just don't know if it's possible to put in anything more than maybe one of these miniseries. So that, you know, those that idea is a little bit better than it was. But otherwise, you know, the, the story is the same. The content is the same. And we can only speculate as to what we think HBO might do with it all. The only thing that's certain at this point is that there are exactly 13 episodes of Game of Thrones left. The characters that we know and have been following for these last six seasons, their stories will be concluded by the end. And we will find out whether anyone will be on the Iron Throne by the end of it all and what the big threat from the North and the White Walkers is going to end up being. The War for the Dawn has been prophesized and it will definitely come to light. I imagine this uh, idea that they kind of hid the Azor High stuff in the new Season 7 photos makes me think that they're most likely going to give us an idea of who that is. And then we also have, you know, the actor who plays Jamie going around kind of spilling a lot of stuff because he is in this new movie on Netflix and he has kind of let some things slip and he usually kind of does. But I think I'm going to make a separate video about that because some of it we've already known, some of it we've already speculated, but this video is about the spinoff. So let's finish it off here. Of course, you can leave a comment of what you want to see and let me know what you think. Do you think there's going to be more than one project or do you think this is basically just a death match to see who could come up with the best project and will only get one prequel spinoff that involves something from George R.R. R. Martin's vast A Song of Ice and Fire universe? I'm not going to lie, I want four of them. My wish list is The Doom, The Rise and Fall of Valyria. Robert's Rebellion would be great in a short series or even a long series, but, you know, not by itself. I don't want it to be the only one. 
And Dunkin' Egg is great. I don't care if it's not exactly the same. It's still really enjoyable. And there's a lot of Blood Raven stuff going on. And I'm a big fan of Blood Raven. So I would like to see that. Plus, there's Blackfire. You know, I, I didn't really mention the Blackfire Rebellions in my original video. And people really like those stories. So that's always there, too. But if that's the case, if there are four different things that spin off, do you think that the, the show and the franchise will experience, like, people having fatigue? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I still have a book giveaway going on, so if you check out the other video, you can get more details about that. It's for my subscribers, and those of you who leave a comment will be entered. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.